Hello, everyone. So we are doing a, another episode of the User Onboarding Teardown Series. And so today we have Chanty. And so in this product, uh, how we typically start things off is we just try and analyze, like, what is this product all about? And try and get a feel for it, usually just from the above the fold copy here. So whenever I'm reading this, it feels like I can get more things done together. So I'm thinking something like Slack. But I'm not too sure how this is different than just any of those team messaging tools. I do like that it is free forever. They're setting this great expectation that, well, I can start using it. I can see something about video chat. Boom, this pops up. I have no idea uh, that was going to happen. So it's not really clear that this is a video until you actually click this button. And so I go down a little bit lower. I can see, OK, here's all the things I can do. I still don't really know what's unique about this product. Um, but they, they tell me I can do it. They have an app, which is cool. Uh, import your team. And code snippets mentions dark theme. OK, so I still have no clue how this is different than Slack. Uh, what are your thoughts, Zach? So uh, <laughs> they are really good alternative of Slack, to be very honest. I've been looking at their blogs for a very long time. Uh, so they really try to differentiate themselves. And Slack does give them a lot of leads by just having uh, being so popular. Um, get more things done together. I think that so what I've learned with their marketing message that they really focus a lot on productivity and how they can boost productivity. And that's where they that's where they also focus and get more things done together. And one thing that you might have missed is just a simple AI powered team chat. So this is something that Slack doesn't claim itself that what it's doing. So maybe that's differentiating. But how does that help me to do my team communication better? Um, I think it's a very generic, um, safe, bad landing page where they're saying, mm -hmm. hey, this is what we do and try it out if it, 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 it works for you. Um, yeah, that's my opinion. But I like the fact that they actually don't like it. On the main page, they say sign up free um, in the enter your email address. On the corner right, it says book a demo. So what should I do? Yeah. My, what's my key action here? Um, so mm -hmm. th that's my opinion. And I think um, if they really want to have a book a demo as well, they can just put it under it by saying, or alternatively book a demo. Um, yeah, and, or talk to a specialist or something down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what my opinion is. OK, so before we dive into the product, one thing I wanted to point you to is just the framework that we use to analyze any onboarding experience. So what we're looking for here at the beginning is the straight line onboarding experience. So when we look at the value prop, we want to be able to experience getting more things done soon. And so we want to have that straight line onboarding experience without any unnecessary steps to actually accomplish that in the product. And then what we're also going to be looking out for, whether it's in-app guidance tools for a product bumper to really guide you through the product to that promised land that they are promising us on the marketing page. And then the conversation bumper, like what are those messages that they're using to prompt us to take action? So I am going to sign up here and go ahead. I like that it's, it's fairly easy. So I have my email, it takes me to kind of another sign up page. This feels a little unprofessional to be honest. I see my email here, there's a little cat. This doesn't feel part of their brand at all. Uh, their brand before looked very professional. It just feels gimmicky, like a kid's tool. And then I see up here, there is tons of different uh, reasons why you should sign up. I actually do like a lot of these bullet points because it gives me an idea of like, okay, here's the value. So it's reminding me why I would actually consider signing up. Uh, so maybe I'd suggest kind of moving those down here uh, because this isn't adding any value. And then let's set up your team space, straightforward. I see my email again. This isn't necessary. I just gave them my email. So I'd actually cut that field out because, well, I, if I didn't change my email, why am I seeing it again? And just ask for the name, like, what is your name? So what are your thoughts, Zara, for this page? Well, uh, talking about unprofessionalism, I think then you should blame a product hunt as well. <laughs> they they <laughs> catch a lot. Um, I think chat, this cat is not part of the brand. That's what your main, main, main pain yeah. point is. Um, I like the little bit of personalization that I do something here and something happens there. So I think instead of, even if there was no cat and it was just a normal personalization there, like whatever you write here happens there, um, would have been fine for me. Um, but what I, I still see like they, they, they have done a good job by mentioning those six points. Um, 
I think uh, here they should promote their testimonial there better because they I, we're still not convinced, right? So we, mm-hmm. we, we should better be able to understand what's different about Chanti. Um, and here it, it would have helped actually if, have, if we had some kind of a testimonial saying a very, somebody who moved from Slack, for example. Say, hey, I used yeah. to use Slack and uh, now I use Chanti and this is why I love Chanti. Definitely. Okay, so we completed that step. They want more information though. So I'm gonna select my uh, company type. So let's go with media. Let's trigger something in their system. Let's go big, employee size, business owner. All right, so I'll probably get a sales rep reaching out. (laughs) So a lot of these things, this is just marketing qualification, which a lot of companies have it. Um, But I'd argue a lot of it might not be necessary, especially depends on which location you're in. So for instance, if you're in Canada or the States, you can use Zoom Info, Clearbit, and a lot of tools to actually find this information and have it be more accurate for you. Uh, If it's European Union, it's a little bit more tricky. And so what I recommend whenever it comes to some of these steps of marketing qualification, uh, if it is the US, like there's tons of data tools to enrich and get this information and it's not too expensive. Whereas if in Europe, sometimes you do still need to ask for it. Although, uh, it might not be necessary. So what are your thoughts, Zara? Is this step really necessary? Yeah, so um, this is purely their, their sales play. Um, they did not used to have it before I, I when I signed up for the first time. And I think they're currently testing if it actually works with the sales team. Um, I think if you ask for my details a bit more, you should tell me why should I give you my details a bit. They say we love getting to know our customers is not enough reason. And I do agree for the fact that you should definitely have some kind of enrichment in there where you can automatically just by email address, IP address can understand where this company mm-hmm. is from and later on figure out how to um, how to actually uh, reach out to that person. Later. And um, yeah, I think you, you're right. I think a lot of companies do it well, but this is just a, a process that a standard that mistake we see in, 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 in normal onboarding processes as well, right? Definitely. All right, so we get that part done and I am filling up my kind of, this is the company name. Although it's not really clear, it says New Horizons Company. That's that's not clear to me. I just feel like, oh, okay, just enter company name would be more clear and direct mm-hmm. versus having some dummy name here. I do like that finding the URL and the company name, it automatically does that. That yeah. saves me another step, so kudos to them for that. Yeah. And Whenever I click continue team activation, this isn't available. So this is something that I would actually recommend. Like if it wasn't available, don't make me click the link. Just have it read and like maybe a little pop up here that says, hey, this is already taken. And so I can do a test and continue. And so that's just a quick thing. One thing here that they're sending me here is the activation code. And so let's see, if I go here, and find the code. This is one of those things that, I don't know. What are your thoughts, Zara? We've had a couple discussions around like the email activation step, if it's really necessary or not, but what's your take on it? So I think the one with the link there is completely horrible. That's the, the, the worst activation part for me. Like, you know, the link is gone and you don't know where to open it. And I think this one actually doesn't have a link in there. So it might not be in the spam folder but it makes yeah. an extra effort. Again, that we keep saying that every company does it. I think it seems like um, most of the companies have this activation problem and uh, somehow or the other, nobody's able to find it. The other way, the other time I found this platform called Bounceless and that actually yeah. verifies your email address already. So perhaps just have that Bounceless integrated in your app and then, um, and then you don't have to activate the user this way because then you're only sending the user which is um, which is uh, verified already. So I think you should yeah. use those technology to activate the user um, and uh, make it much more better. I agree. All right, so I found the code, activated it. Now it's asking me to kind of add that first teammate. So I'm actually gonna skip this, but I do like for a product like this, this step makes a ton of sense just because, hey, like I, if I'm gonna be having any value from this tool, I need to add employees. So I'm gonna skip this. And now it's taking me to the product. I was fairly quick. And so now they're walking me through some of the steps. So 
Welcome to Test, which is the name of my company. <laughs> I'm Rufus. Okay, so the thing that's interesting here is on their website, their front-facing website, there's no kind of like brand like this that I noticed. And then as soon as I go into the product, it's like there's a whole another graphics designer who's got a personality and is taking control of the screen. And so I just felt like there's a little bit of disconnect. I thought Chanty was more corporate on the marketing side than when I get on the product. It feels fun and exciting. So that's a little bit of a disconnect. I'm not saying one's bad or one's right. It's just if you're going to use kind of cartoons like this, own it through the whole experience, not just in the product. Yeah. So I'm going here, click let's go. And it's kind of nice. It's telling me like, okay, let's organize your communication, uh, find teammates, chat, and more, and get the ball rolling. So I'm not sure what that one really did, but uh, no more barking. I'll be right here if you need any help. Okay, so I'm now into the product. I finished the tour. One of the uses of those in-app guidance tools that I liked was that it was actually kind of educating me about what each of these had done so that I can start communicating better. However, it kind of left me hanging in terms of what do I do next? So I'm going here, I read, I see a YouTube video, and they're really just trying to get me to watch their video so I can start using their platform. But what if I wanna do something else? Like I, I can explore here, but then like if I wanna add someone, like I don't really actually know how to add people unless I kind of wander around and I'm like, wait a minute, where do I add teammates again? So that's my, my little bit of an overview of the uh, dashboard. I just felt like it wasn't that well laid out or that kind of, um, you know, dummy proof because I'm still confused right now what to do next. How about you? Yeah, so um, I did sign up a couple of uh, weeks ago on this platform and they had a different kind of onboarding, which was much useful than this one. So I think they should definitely go back. Um, one thing about the brand that you were talking about, I, th the first one was a cat and the second was, was a dog. So I think yeah. like either have a dog or a cat, like keep, keep it one way, like just be consistent. That's one thing that I can, if they are talking about Rufus, why not show Rufus from the beginning? So that's, that's the other thing. Um, I think the platform is, is, is a bit easier to use because it's just a community team communication. Um, I think with a lot of chat tools, initially they had this like, Hey, write a message. This is how you write a message. What can you do next? Right? So I think instead yeah. of taking me to like telling me about three tool tips there, which does nothing except, uh, telling me these buttons, these are buttons, but I didn't learn anything. And one thing which I'm telling my customers all the time is that focus on learning by doing focus on making them click and then yeah. do something and then they will get it okay this is what it does um also like um so focus a lot on like making them click in first three to four interactions so that they get it and think about the user journey like okay when somebody signs in what are the first two four things the user will be doing they might be writing a message they will create a channel they can create some kind of, they can invite a team member. Um, and then you can think about that option later on. Um, so I think these are the things they should really focus on. What I really like is that they have some kind of a manual walkthrough uh, click there. So I can go back again and see what it does um, in there. So I think this is something that you can always do. Um, but I still don't get why YouTube video is there. If YouTube video is the most important thing, then just bring a pop up to my face and say, Hey, watch this video. This will tell you everything that you need to know. But then again, that becomes very generic as well. Also, you came from, I think this talk, this product is very generic itself. So you can't personalize anything because everybody just has to do the same thing. So I think you focus on three, three to four things, creating a channel, writing a message, creating a task, inviting a team member put a checklist on top that was useful. And these things might really help you to um, kick off the user directly. Um, my question yeah. to you is that, what do you think about this in comparison to Slack? What, what, what's Slack doing really well? So the thing I like about Slack is, I mean, I feel like some of the experience was the same in terms of like they had to educate us on different ways of uh, communicating. However, like when I was in Slack, like there was a lot less junk. Like, I just feel like I go in here, there's all these conversations started, 
and it just feels messy. Like there is not a lot of actions here where I'm like, okay, like if you think about like even just back to the framework here, the straight line onboarding, uh, what do I need to do to see value? Regardless of this is Slack, Chanty, it's like I need to sign up, one, okay, done. Uh, they do that. But then the next part is I need to add coworkers. So step two, and I need to create conversations and have those conversations and have people engage with my conversations. And so there's like three or four steps of absolutely mission critical steps. And yet there's over 20, 25 steps in this whole process. So I would just really focus on, okay, how can we get someone to create a conversation like this YouTube video? It's like, what is Chanty? It's like, this is an educational video. This is not showing me how to do stuff. Even if it was showing me how to do stuff, there's better ways to do that, like the tool tips. So I would get uh, this space and kind of just list out like, okay, here's a checklist, the things you need to do, add your coworkers. Like if they didn't do it already, remind them, like make a checklist with those three or four items so that people can do it at their own leisure whenever they have a time to do it. But uh, to set up a product like this, it's not hard in terms of the number of steps. The hard part is really getting other users to engage with the first person who signs up as the champion. So that's my, my overall feedback on the product. How about you? Yeah, I think they can do a really good job in making you click on those mission critical steps and uh, um, be consistent in terms of brand. Um, use the uh, sign up flow uh, much intelligently in terms of using Clearbit or uh, Zoom info. And uh, I think what they can also do is like, is as I said in my every sign up flow, which is like what the user will do next once the user has actually have a channel and they have already took a message and invited a team member. Mm -hmm. uh, what else they can do then do next? Think about this already already in the user journey and place it later on in the second, third, or fourth, or fifth step session where they come back again. I think for them, one of the very mission critical uh, thing that they did not do was download the Slack, uh, not Slack, sorry, sorry about that, Chanty's uh, button from Mac OS or whatever the so yeah. operating system you have. Because once you download it, then you're gonna play more. Then it's, it, it might come back again when you restart your laptop. So you will, it, you will remember it. So I think these things that might also help them to activate the user. And for me, the clear activation in this moment is writing a message, inviting an, inviting a team member, and then maybe later on creating a channel and then, um, then creating a task. So these are four tasks that I think, but I think the most important one is inviting a team member because this is a collaboration tool. And so when the user does that, you need to know what the next thing is. Maybe after five, six, products they might have to go towards hey download chanty you haven't downloaded yet and focus on that um remove the video video they already place themselves as chant slack alternative in the video which i wouldn't like because i still want to have my own personality i don't want to be just called as alternative yes on the marketing side it's okay but inside the app um i would be bringing up my own personality and my own stance why i'm great and why this is the best tool in the, in the world Right. Okay. So that is a wrap for the user onboarding teardown of Chanty. And now if you'd like to subscribe and stay up to date for the next episode, make sure to subscribe below. Zara, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah. And I'm, I'm giving uh, a giveaway, um, 30 minutes of my time. Uh, if you write hashtag onboarding in the video, um, I will pick one winner and will personally look at your website and onboarding and give you personal feedback because we can't cover everyone in this onboarding teardown. So why not just help you out personally? Just write hashtag onboarding and we're going to help you out.